I'm chairing this committee called the Cultural Property Advisory Committee, which is part of, it's, there are many, many federal advisory committees and boards and commissions that assist the federal government in basically carrying out its various responsibilities. So this one is actually to help the United States in implementing its legislation under an international convention called the 1970 UNESCO Convention on the means of prohibiting and preventing the illicit import, export, and transfer of ownership of cultural property, which is quite a mouthful. So basically, countries can ask the United States to impose import restrictions on the importation of what we call undocumented archaeological or ethnographic material, which are basically things that have left the country, the other country, without an export license. So many countries try to control the trade of ethnographic and archaeological materials primarily to prevent looting of archaeological sites. Um, and the objects that are looted are then traded on the international market, and they come to major market countries, such as the United States. Um, and similar with ethnographic material, which is basically things from non-pre-industrial uh, tribal societies, um, so indigenous cultures and the like. So um, a country presents a request to the United States uh, with um, their set of criteria established in the statute that we operate under that um, allow us to recommend, we don't make the final decision, but to recommend to the State Department um, officials whether the United States should enter into an agreement with the other country and impose these import restrictions. So that's our function, is to look at the materials that are sent. Um, there's also opportunity for the public to comment. We usually hold a public hearing, and then we take all this information together and we make a recommendation. Oh, wow, that's an interesting question. I haven't asked that in a long time. Um, I had worked as an archaeologist because I have a degree in archaeology before I went into law. And so um, I had excavated things that are like five, 6,000 years old. Um, one was a skeleton that we excavated that was completely intact in C2, which was pretty fascinating. Um, From what time period? It was about 2500 BC, okay. so 5,500 years old. Um, and other things from that time period. I've also um, been able to study some of the Parthenon sculptures that are in the British Museum. So things like that have been pretty exciting. Very, very cool. A <laughs> um, couple of things. Um, I think most particularly was realizing, um, this was of course a long time ago, 30, more than 30 years ago, uh, but I began to realize that there were a lot of legal issues. Um, really, the field of art law and cultural property law just barely existed at that time. But um, I had been interested in the law actually before I did the archaeology. And so um, I did that, obviously, um, and I taught archaeology for a couple of years. But I began to see that the field was a pretty narrow one um, and that the Implications of how archaeological artifacts are dealt with in some ways was more interesting in terms of what that tells us about contemporary society. And I felt that how society views the past um, is best studied as how it's embodied in the law and how the law deals with cultural artifacts. So I think that's helped me make that transition mm -hmm. and actually to combine both the loves that I have, um, both my academic loves. fitting within a broader perspective of um, the Obama administration's goals to um, further what is called public diplomacy and cultural diplomacy, that cultural relations cultural and cultural heritage are an important part of our um, foreign relations and our diplomacy. And this has been a big change from past administrations. So I would like to see um, my role as fitting within that broader spectrum, and I think that using what we call soft power, essentially. Diplomacy, as opposed to just military power, is an important part of building friendly relations throughout the world. And showing that we respect other countries' cultures is an important part of that. So um, the first is that the, um, and, and they don't necessarily apply to specific artifact types, although that is how the legislation works, but the artifacts have to be subject to looting in the country that has made the request for the import restrictions. So the specifics of kinds of artifacts probably are most considered under the question of whether they are subject um, to looting and pillage that threatens the cultural patrimony, the cultural heritage of the country that has asked for the import restrictions. 
Other than that, the other three criteria are more general. One is whether the country is taking um, efforts itself to comply with both the terms of this UNESCO convention and also to protect its own heritage. Third is whether other countries that have a market in those objects are taking similar steps to prevent trade in looted and illegally exported artifacts. And the fourth is whether um, the import restrictions will actually help to promote um, intercultural exchange in ways that do not damage the cultural heritage of the country. So those are not so much specific artifact by artifact criteria. So mm -hmm. probably the most relevant would be the first one. But a list is drawn up and that um, shows the artifact types. Because when an artifact is looted out of the ground, there's no documentation for it. It's not like if something's stolen from a museum, you know, the museum probably has a photograph, they'll have an inventory number, they'll have a description. So if something's stolen from a museum that shows up, let's say, in the United States, it's easily classified as a stolen object, and it can be identified and returned. But when an object is looted from the ground, it's not documented in any way. So it gets traded through the market, shows up in the United States, nobody knows, you know, um, is it subject to some kind of legal restraint because it's not specifically documented. So what these import restrictions do is it creates a list of artifact types. So if an object fits into the artifact type, then the importer has to show an export license from the country of origin or that it was exported before the restriction went into effect. So this is the only way of trying to deal with the problem of looting of artifacts directly from the ground, which is what causes the most destruction of our past, our knowledge of the past, and um, dealing with this problem of undocumented artifacts.